Hi, welcome to Gypsy Jazz Bootcamp for the ukulele. Today we're going to be discussing triad embellishments, which I feel are very important, if not the foundation for a lot of the Gypsy Jazz um, improvisational ideas. So let's get to work. Um, we're going to start with a C major triad. This is all notated on my PDF, which I hope you have in front of you. Um, however, uh, in case you don't, uh, here is the shape. It's five, four, three, and three. It's a C major triad. C, E, G, C. Okay. Um, so that's the shape that you're supposed to visualize. Here are some good exercises. You want to just use one finger and just play those notes individually. Okay. Maybe add a little bit of rhythm. Seems basic, I know. And just limit yourself to just that. Sometimes I like to use my middle finger. So I don't necessarily limit myself to any particular finger, even though my, my first and my second finger are probably the most common. And we're just going to stick with this one inversion. Uh, if you've seen my other videos, I'm really big on stressing the importance of knowing your triad inversions. So this would be C. This would be the next C, and this would be the next C, okay? Um, and please refer to my triad study sheet, number one. Uh, so, but today's lesson is on triad embellishments, as you heard at the beginning of the video, just how to get some of these really sweet and pretty sounds. They're very ornamented, very inspired by Django Reinhardt, that style. So again, here's C. Uh, let's lay down a, a little C major chord progression underneath. Um, maybe just one, six, two, five to demonstrate how this can be used on a turnaround or one, six, two, five, which could be the foundation of a song. Um, and that's just kind of a fancied up, you know, movement here. So the chords I'll use are C, A minor seven, D minor seven, and I'll use G nine. Okay, one, six, two, five, like this. great over a progression in the key of C. It could be three, six, two, five. It could be um, even my my approach to soloing on songs like Take the A Train or Exactly Like You, um, where you have a whole eight bars in the key of C or, you know, that is firmly based off of C. Uh, but there, you know, that goes to other chords, of course. And this still sounds great. Um, so that was those two embellishments. First one was lower neighbor tone, which is a half step. That's very common. And then the next one was scale tone above. Whole step above the root. Whole step above the fifth. Half step above the third. Be careful, that's where it needs to be a half step. 
So and then whole step again on the root. So essentially you're playing D minor to C. Okay. Okay, so here's that loop. Um, that even that one, uh, I wrote it out as a second as the A two A. There it could be thought of as a scale, just by combining those two triads, C major and D minor, those triad pairs right next to each other, you get six notes. Right, so all we're omitting is the seventh degree. So it's kind of a neat way to play a C major scale. Again, we're omitting one note. Um, so number three here is a combination, and I call this one usually the Mona Lisa. I like to start on the root, when I teach this one, I call it the Mona Lisa. Okay, so it starts on the root, and we take it through the, through the, the shape. So we go chord tone, lower neighbor, scale tone above, and then back to the chord tone. And then of course right here is the fifth. Let's set up the progression again a little bit quicker. One, two, three, four. And here it is. Okay. So again, just to give you some quick demonstrations of this technique. Um, well, now variations, so many variations. So I'm just going to go through the list here since, again, I hope you have my PDF. Uh, the next one would just be lower neighbor, starting on the lower neighbor, and then going above scale tone, and then landing on the chord tone. So it sounds like this. And that's usually typically called enclosure when you're surrounding the note and not starting on the note. Okay. Uh, similarly, you can start above it, scale tone above, and then go below it and then land on your target tone. Okay. Uh, really nice ideas. demonstrations there. Uh, that, that one is interesting because you can get that syncopation if you were to play it as consecutive eighth notes instead of as a triplet, which is cool. Okay, let's just do a couple more here for the short uh, video called Triad Embellishments number one, just to get you introduced to this concept. On the next video for this, I will uh, demonstrate it on minor chords, of course, and you might have already seen my Gypsy Jazz Boot Camp over minor swing which uses these ideas. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, some fancier embellishments that I like to do. Um, I like to add a little slur. This is very inspired by Django. Okay, so I'm starting on the chord tone. Next one. Same batch of notes as before. These are just all combination patterns and variations. That little slur is really sweet. Here's the rhythm track. So you can see again how I like to use it into improvisation just to give me some ideas when I'm just jamming on the C major progression. That was one, six, two, five. Okay, it could just be a C chord, of course, too. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to get have some movement in there. 
could be anything rhythm changes. It could be three, six, two, five. Okay, that sound great as well. Um, here's the last one that I like to do. It's kind of a little bit of a longer one. Um, this is covered in my Sweet Georgia Brown Etude number two. Um, this site, this type of embellishment pattern. So again, I'm going to start on the chord tone. It just embellishes or builds off the last one, but it's a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm starting on the chord tone above it with a slur as a triplet, and then slide down to the note below it. That's a half step always, and then back to the chord tone above the chord tone, and then back to the chord tone. And then back to the lower neighbor, and then back to the chord tone. So it sounds like this. Okay. Okay, so let's put that rhythm track on. So there again were some other embellishments, and I just started to get into that other inversion. So these ideas, um, these embellishments, want to be implied to all over the fretboard, you know, as much as you can if you don't have a cutaway, especially. And then eventually, through the chord changes of the song that you're playing, okay, and that's what a lot of my Gypsy Jazz boot camp exercises are. As if you've already seen my Sweet Georgia Brown or Minor Swing, it's about targeting each chord and then being able to focus in on the chord tones. So I hope this uh, exercise, a short video tutorial on triad embellishments, helps you out. Please get my PDF if you don't already have it. Please join my Patreon uh, website, which has, well, eventually it's rolling out all my material. And uh, hopefully it helps you out a lot with your music and yet you enjoy this style. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you.